Hey, where have you been? At the rec center. First meeting for my new history club. Is that the club my friend Maria joined? Yeah. I didn't know there were going to be older kids, but it's mostly middle schoolers and even a few high school kids. I'm actually the youngest member. So what do you guys do? Just talk about history? No. There's going to be a book club with discussions, and we'll also play video games and board games based on historical events. Oh, that's perfect for Maria. She's always trying to get me to play that stuff, but no thanks. It's great there's a place for you history nerds to get together and nerd out. At next week's meeting, there's a tryout for leadership positions. I kind of want to try out for president. But I don't know. Since I'm the youngest member, maybe I shouldn't. I don't want to make the older kids mad at me. What do you think? I'm not really sure, but it's probably fine. You love history, you're smart, and you're a hard worker. I would think that's all that matters, right? Eh, I don't know. Well, since we're on the topic, let's use the History app and go talk to a young leader to get some advice. Yeah, great idea! All right, Philadelphia, it will be so long for now, but I doubt you've seen the last of Alexander. Oh, hello there. Interdimensional travelers visiting me on my last day in the presidential cabinet? How grand. I recognize you. Yeah, Alexander Hamilton. You were on the $10 bill. Oh, isn't that clever? Putting me on currency. I am our young nation's first secretary of treasury. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Hamilton. I'm Layla. And I'm Leo. You said something about being in a cabinet? This looks like an office. <laughs> Silly boy. This is an office. The president's cabinet is a group of advisors who help him with making decisions and presidential business. It's like the Italian word, cabinetto, meaning a small and private room good for discussions. Okay, so since you're a member of the first presidential cabinet, that means you work for George Washington. But since this is your last day, does that mean you got fired? Heavens no. The president and I have a wonderful relationship, and I have worked closely with him in war and governance for nearly half my life. However, the time has come for me to move back to New York City and return to my family and law practice. Mr. Hamilton, sir, Leo is thinking about running for president of his history club, but he's the youngest member, so he's nervous and isn't sure about running. We're looking for a young leader to give him advice. Could you point us in the right direction? And what's wrong with me? I'm the youngest cabinet member and, not to brag, but actually, I am going to brag. I've been in positions of leadership with adult responsibilities since I was your age. Oh, well, I just assumed because of your gray hair. This powder in my hair is just to make me look professional and distinguished, an appearance I'm always striving for because, like I said, I've often been the youngest in some very important rooms. Can you tell us about your life? Few things bring me more pleasure to speak about. Unlike the other founding fathers, I didn't begin life in America. I was born on the small island of Nevis and split my childhood between there and another Caribbean island called St. Croix. I had to grow up fast because my father was never around and my poor mother died from yellow fever when I was but 11. Oh no, who looked after you? An older cousin took me in, but soon he also died. Then a kind man who owned an import-export trading firm permitted me to live and work with him. By the age of 14, I was left in charge of his entire business operation while he traveled overseas. You ran an international business at 14? <laughs> you can't even run the dishwasher. Leo. During those early years, I didn't receive proper schooling, but I read everything I got my hands on and practiced writing as often as possible. Following a nasty hurricane that struck my island, I described the attack in a letter that ended up being published in the newspaper. Readers were so impressed with my writing ability and style that island community leaders collected money and sent me to New York for an education. That must have been some letter. Oh, it was. And in New York, I received special training to catch me up with subjects like geography and history. And by 17, I entered university at King's College in Manhattan. Was it nice to finally be able to go to school? It was, and I loved my time at university. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish because during my studies, our revolution of independence from Britain began and war swept over the colonies. Did you join the fight? Of course I did. I quickly joined the New York militia and despite still being a teenager, thanks to my enthusiasm, leadership, work ethic, and sharp mind, I was soon elected captain of an artillery company 
following our capture of British cannons. You were an officer as a teenager? Mm-hmm. And at 20, I played an influential role in the American victory at the Battle of Princeton. Under my direction, cannons fired upon the British and helped force their defeat. General Washington, who had led the mission, was so impressed by my service that he offered me a position as his personal assistant, or aide-de-camp. You took it, right? George Washington? Um, yes. At first, I was reluctant. I wanted to remain in the middle of the fight because, oh, how I desired military glory. But you're right. Come on. You can't say no to G-Dub. Yeah, we've met him. He's a man. Indeed, he is. And for four years, I served as General Washington's chief staff aide. But before the end of the war, he did permit me to return to field command. And I successfully commanded an infantry battalion in the Battle of Yorktown giving me the battlefield glory I was desperate for. The British gave up after Yorktown, right? Then the war was over? Yes, you know your history, young man. But winning the fight for independence was just the beginning of our hard work. We then had to create a country from nothing, and thus began the trial and error process of creating our remarkable United States of America. There were many different opinions about the way to move forward as an independent nation, and even though I was among the youngest voices from the beginning, I made sure mine was heard. How old were you then? I was appointed a member of the Congress of the Confederation at 25, and for the next six years, my colleagues and I met, debated, and argued over the direction of our new nation and how we should organize and govern. Ugh, sounds complicated. It certainly was. Trying to get all 13 former British colonies to unite into one nation was most difficult. I have consistently pushed for a more powerful federal government here in the capital, a strong national defense, and rules that force us to build up our own businesses so that we aren't reliant on buying things from foreign countries. However, other founding fathers have thought differently. Nobody got exactly what they wanted, but through a series of compromises, we settled on a United States Constitution that I'm very proud of. Did you write it? No, wasn't that James Madison? Not bad, young Mr. Leo. James did indeed have a big role in the drafting of our wonderful Constitution, but many others, including myself, assisted him with it. And after it was done, he and I, along with Mr. John Jay, wrote a collection of 85 essays called the Federalist Papers. They were published in newspapers and explained the Constitution. That's so many essays. Tell me about it, and I wrote most of them. It wasn't easy, but the Constitution is complicated. And for it to be accepted, the American people needed to know the reasons why we were setting up our rules and laws the way we did. Thanks to the Federalist Papers, the Constitution was easily understood, and each state agreed to make it the law of our land. You sure have done a lot, Mr. Hamilton. Oh, but Leo, I'm far from finished. Thanks to my work on the Constitution, on the Federalist Papers, and in Congress, once my old boss, General Washington, was made President Washington, he hired me to be the nation's first Secretary of Treasury when I was just 32 years of age. Treasury? Like treasure. So you've been in charge of money. Yes, very smart, Miss Layla. And for the last five years, I've once again quite possibly been the most trusted advisor to the main man, George Washington. Thanks to my advice, we've started paying off our debts and balancing the nation's budget. We established a currency, stabilized taxes, encouraged immigration, and I've even fought for Americans who want to make factories full of machines in a process called industrialization. I do believe the USA can be the strongest nation in the world. And thanks to my ideas, we're well on our way. But now you're leaving? Yes, for now. But I figure I'll have many more years to serve and help this great country grow. Have you ever been afraid or intimidated that you were too young for any of the important jobs you've had? No, and I suppose after my lengthy biography, that brings us back to the point of your visit. Things like age, race, and who our families are or where we come from are out of our control. So why worry about them? That makes sense. If I ever worried about how old I was, or that I was an orphan, or that I wasn't born here, I'd be putting limitations onto myself that good leaders like George Washington never cared about. And I would have missed out on some incredible opportunities. All General and President Washington ever cared about was that I was smart, capable, hardworking, and always prepared. Leo, you're a very smart young man who knows an awful lot about history. 
and those sound like pretty good qualifications to try out for a leadership position in your history club. See? Don't put limits on yourself, especially because you're young. Take it from me. Okay, Mr. Hamilton, I'm gonna go for it. Do you mind if I use you as an example in my speech of how age shouldn't matter as long as I'm qualified? Leo, I'd be offended if you didn't. So long, you wonderful young Americans. Bye, Bye Mr. Hamilton. Hey, did you give your speech? Are you the president? Yes and no. I gave the speech and it went great, but I didn't win the presidency. Your friend Maria actually did. I'm sorry, Leo. No, it's okay. Maria deserved it. Her speech was incredible, but my speech was good too. I talked about how Alexander Hamilton was always considered young, but that he never let it get in his way because he was always qualified for the things he did. People loved my speech so much that even though I didn't get president, I got a cabinet position. Really? Let me guess, Secretary of Treasury like Hamilton? Yep, maybe someday I'll be on the $9 bill. If you'd like to time travel with Leo and Layla again, please visit PragerU.com kids and watch more of their adventures. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.